Hey there, everyone! Today we're inviting you on a journey way back in time, over 300 million years into the distant past. Can you survive in the dense jungles of the Carboniferous period, where giant insects and equally massive amphibians once roamed? And why is too much oxygen just as dangerous as not having enough? Welcome to our channel! Stick around because we're about to uncover the answers and so much more. Alright then, let's get going! The Astonishing Forests and Their Hidden Dangers Scientists call the period that began around 359 million years ago and ended roughly 299 million years ago the Carboniferous Period. It earned that name because massive coal beds were formed during that time, and even today, humanity continues to rely on those ancient resources. Coal, at its core, is essentially fossilized plant material. And during the Carboniferous, there was an absolutely staggering abundance of plant life. In fact, there were more plants growing than at any other time before or after in Earth's history. Practically all of the land back then was covered in vast, warm, swampy jungles. Life had already been steadily moving onto land during the previous era, the Devonian. The pioneers in that great migration were almost certainly plants. With no plant-eating animals around to keep them in check, these plants spread rapidly, covering huge areas and creating entirely new kinds of environments like wetlands. That incredible expansion of plant life during the Devonian set the stage for the Carboniferous to become the era we know today. Nature always operates on a balance between two opposing forces. Plants, through photosynthesis, absorb carbon dioxide and release oxygen, while all animals do the opposite – they breathe in oxygen and exhale carbon dioxide. Plants produce far more oxygen than they consume, and animals, in turn, use up much more oxygen than they create. In today's world, most photosynthesis happens in the oceans, but at the start of the Carboniferous, there were so many plants on land that they made a huge contribution to oxygen production. Sure, animals were already part of the picture, but there just weren't enough of them to burn through all that extra oxygen. As a result, the early Carboniferous atmosphere became unique with oxygen making up about 35% of the air, one and a half times higher than what we have now. Breathing in that kind of atmosphere probably wouldn't be all that pleasant for modern humans. Yes, oxygen is essential for us to live, but it's also an irritant, and when levels get too high, it can cause severe burns to your respiratory system, skin, and even your eyes and mucous membranes. To make matters worse, the air back then was extremely humid, making the climate feel oppressively hot and muggy. So if you were to somehow visit Earth during the Carboniferous, chances are you wouldn't be marveling at the plants or animals, you'd be too busy struggling just to breathe. Which brings us to a helpful tip. If you ever plan on taking a trip back that far in time, don't forget to pack some kind of respiratory protection. And honestly, that device holds true for pretty much any ancient era you might visit. Earth's atmosphere has changed dramatically over tens or even hundreds of millions of years. The Creatures of the Forest So, let's imagine you've taken our advice and strapped on that essential respiratory gear. With that, you can safely make your way through the dense thickets of ferns and other gymnosperms, which grow in thick, tangled masses throughout the Carboniferous forests. But one thing you won't find here, anywhere at all, are flowers or fruits. That's because flowering plants haven't made their debut yet, not even close. They won't appear until the Cretaceous period, which is about 200 million years after the Carboniferous. If mammals are the rulers of today's world, and reptiles dominated the age of dinosaurs, then the Carboniferous was ruled by amphibians and anthropods. Thanks to the massive amount of oxygen in the atmosphere, anthropods grew to monstrous sizes, something that simply couldn't happen today. One of the most iconic creatures of this time was Arthropleura, a colossal millipede-like anthropod stretching about 8 feet long, making it the largest anthropod ever to roam the Earth. Feeling a little uneasy already? Don't worry, Arthropleura was a strict vegetarian. Still, it's best not to get too close. After all, it might see you as a threat if you start poking around. But there were other creatures in these forests that could pose a real danger to any time traveler. Take Meganeura, for example, 
the largest flying insect in the history of paleontology. This ancient relative of modern mayflies had a wingspan that stretched nearly 28 inches across. And it wasn't the only predator. Its cousins from the Dictyoneuridae family, also carnivorous, were about the size of a human head. Swatting away at these giants with your hand? Yeah, that's not gonna work. But here's one piece of good news for anyone who can't stand bugs. There were no mosquitoes or flies during the Carboniferous. Instead, this era was home to giant bedbugs. Thankfully, they hadn't yet figured out how to suck blood. There simply weren't any suitable animals around for them to practice on. Still, we wouldn't recommend you be the first volunteer. The main predators keeping these massive insects in check were amphibians of all shapes and sizes, from tiny critters to giant beasts. These amphibians lived in swamps, rivers, lakes, and even shallow coastal waters, hunting mostly by ambush. And instead of looking like today's frogs or salamanders, they resembled crocodiles far more closely. Compared to modern predators, they were clumsy and slow, and might even mistake a human for one of their own. But that doesn't mean you should go up and introduce yourself. Think of sharks. They're not exactly bright and don't really recognize humans as prey. When a shark bites, it's usually out of curiosity or because it feels threatened. But knowing that doesn't make things any easier for the poor soul caught in its jaws. So, if you happen to spot Yogurinus, an amphibian nearly 13 feet long, you'd be wise to turn around and get out of there fast. One of the most unusual things about the Carboniferous world was that you could find the same kinds of creatures almost everywhere. During the middle of the Carboniferous, the continents merged into a supercontinent known as Pangaea, which brought together nearly all the land on Earth. Winds easily scattered primitive plant spores across thousands of miles, quickly filling places where life had barely gained a foothold before. And once those forests took root, the animals soon followed. As a result, nearly all of Pangaea was covered in the same kind of ecosystem, lush, swampy jungles packed with ferns, so whether you were on one side or the other, you'd encounter the exact same kind of plants and animals. In fact, seeing just one part of Pangaea during the Carboniferous period would give you a pretty good sense of the entire supercontinent. Fancy a swim? If walking through ancient forests isn't thrilling enough for you, we can always take a dip in the water instead. In the shallows, you might run into giant sea scorpions or even bigger amphibians, surrounded by thick, tangled mats of algae. Just be careful not to get caught up in that mess or step on anything venomous hiding in the weeds. In fresh water, you could encounter Rhizodus, a monstrous fish that grew to around 26 feet long. And in salt water, there was an even bigger predator, Carcharopsis, a prehistoric shark. Believe it or not, some of them reached lengths of up to 43 feet. These fish were deadly hunters, and running into one could mean serious trouble. But not every creature in the Carboniferous seas was out for blood. While fish truly dominated during the Devonian period, the oceans were still teeming with them in the Carboniferous, and not all were massive or dangerous. You might also spot strange, shelled mollusks or even trilobites scuttling along the seafloor. Although trilobites had long passed their prime after peaking in the Cambrian, they hadn't vanished completely, not just yet. So if you can manage to avoid the apex predators, scuba diving in the Carboniferous Sea might actually be worth your while. On both land and sea, though, there's one threat you might not think of – microorganisms. The microbes of that time were far more primitive than anything your immune system encounters today. But that's exactly the problem – your immune system wouldn't recognize them and wouldn't know how to respond. That's why you'd be wise to take precautions to avoid catching something nasty. And even more importantly, make sure you don't infect anything from that time. Compared to today's highly evolved organisms, Carboniferous life was incredibly primitive and fragile. Bring anything back with you and it wouldn't survive long. So please, take this seriously. If some poor amphibian happens to bite you and dies from a modern pathogen it picked up, you could trigger a butterfly effect that changes the future forever. So once again, let us remind you. Don't touch anything, no matter how tempting it might be. You're far more dangerous to the plants and animals of the Carboniferous than they are to you. Sadly, this amazing chapter in Earth's history didn't last. By the end of the Carboniferous, the unique jungles that defined the period were wiped out by a variety of environmental changes.
the oxygen levels in the atmosphere dropped, and the vast, unified biome shattered into smaller, scattered ones. This shift did help pave the way for more advanced and complex life forms to evolve, but the lush, swampy jungles of the Carboniferous never returned. If you enjoyed today's adventure, go ahead and hit that like button and share the video on your favorite social media. Thanks so much for watching! Until next time, take care and see you soon!